Hello and welcome to this video about speech, interpersonal communication, and about emotions. And about how emotions can influence interpersonal communication and how your interpersonal communication can influence your emotion and the emotions of others. In this video, we're going to define emotion. Uh, we're also going to look at primary and secondary emotions. And uh, we'll look a little bit of, about the uh, physiology uh, of emotions as well. Uh, finally, we'll conclude by making some connections back to the scholarship of Dr. Paul Ekman and nonverbal communication. According to our text, emotions are physiological, behavioral, and or communicative reactions to stimuli that are cognitively processed and experienced as emotional. In other words, we experience stimuli we have a physiological reaction to that, we interpret what that physiological reaction means, and we experience an emotion. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about uh, which comes first, uh, the stimuli and the emotional uh, response, uh, and, and, and what part of the emotional response happens first. Uh, does the, the secretion of hormones and the physiological uh, experience of the emotion precede perception, or does perception cause the physiological response to actually happen? Here we have a, a number of different uh, emoticons listed. Uh, one of the you know big uh, kind of under underwhelming sort of things about you know text-based uh, you know messaging on phones is that it had for a long time an inability to convey emotional con content. That's one of the reasons why emojis proliferated so much, uh, is because they allowed us uh, kind of an emotional language in addition to that that textual language. So there's uh, kind of some difference of opinion uh, in the the literature as to whether or not there are six primary emotions or seven primary emotions or eight primary emotions. This particular graphic lists off six uh, primary emotions, and for the most part, that's in agreement uh, with our text. Uh, which indicates that we experience joy, distress, anger, fear, surprise, and disgust. Um, one of the interesting things about emotions is that we have these primary emotions and then we have secondary emotions. And just like we have primary colors and secondary colors, we can make secondary colors uh, by mixing our primary colors uh, together with one another. So uh, we can also do the same thing with emotions. We can make secondary emotions by mixing together two primary emotions. So one of the behavioral scientists who believes that emotions, uh, that there's eight underlying basic uh, emotions is uh, Plutchik. And uh, Plutchik indicates that it's fear, surprise, disgust, anger, sadness, anticipation, joy, and acceptance, which are the eight universal emotional states of humans. Now, one of the interesting things about Plutchek's model is that it allows for us to kind of see what some of those, you know, kind of com combinations, some of those mixed emotions uh, actually are. And uh, according to Plutchek's model, uh, things like love is literally a mixed emotion between joy and trust. Uh, remorse uh, is literally a mixed emotion between sadness and disgust. Awe is what happens when we experience fear and surprise. So it's kind of these liminal states in between the wagon wheels uh, of the different, you know, primary emotions. When we get out into the spokes uh, of the of the wagon, those are still the primary, you know, kind of emotions. But that negative space, the space in between those spokes, uh, is also emotional space, and uh, it's just a combination of two emotions together. Uh, that constructs uh, essentially a new secondary emotional state. So now that we've talked about emotions and uh, we've described emotions and we've talked about primary and secondary emotions, let's discuss uh, very quickly about how we physiologically experience emotions. And uh, we have two kind of nervous systems uh, at play here. We have a sympathetic nervous system and uh, we have a parasympathetic nervous system. And uh, our sympathetic nervous system attempts to trigger arousal, and our parasympathetic uh, nervous system attempts to tamp down arousal. And I thought that these were, you know, some some interesting pictures of two uh, girls uh, showing kind of that calm and uh, you know sort of that anticipation and excitement. This graphic uh, talks about you know the different responses in a little bit more detail. 
We have uh, various sympathetic nervous systems that tends to happen a little bit lower down uh, the spine. And then we have uh, our, our parasympathetic division and that tends to happen up a little bit more uh, towards the top part of, of the spinal column and uh, towards the bottom part as well. So we have various different parts of endocrine systems and various different parts of digestive systems of, of all kinds of other systems, respiratory systems, uh, which are involved in the production of emotion and uh, how we look at uh, the world around us. So uh, each one of these nervous systems, uh, which are part of our you know central nervous system, uh, are responsible uh, in, in some regard uh, for how we experience emotions. There was a, an interesting study done in 2013 by uh, several Finnish researchers, and uh, they asked a, uh, a sample of around uh, 701 uh, Taiwanese and Scandinavian men and women uh, to look at uh, some, some different emotions, and they, they flashed words like anger or you know, feared or disgust uh, across a screen. And then they asked uh, the, the participants in the study to point out the places where they physiologically experienced uh, that emotion. And that could be a tangling sensation, that could be uh, a, uh, a neurological, you know, stimuli, uh, that could be uh, nerves, uh, that could be uh, an increase in circulation or blood flow uh, to an area. Uh, but more or less just where do you feel you know these different emotions and uh, the uh, the product of essentially you know all of those the correlations uh, that were arrived at after you know those 701 people uh, input their data was that we experience emotions basically uh, in a manner consistent with this this visual aid here or with this graphic um, we have uh, a lot of uh, either head or torso action uh, or uh, potentially, you know, we have a, a gut feeling, you know, sometimes about things as well. Uh, we can also, you know, have a stimulated, you know, sort of response uh, in our in our uh, genital area uh, or in our extremities uh, as uh, in the hands or the feet. Uh, you notice too uh, in anger, uh, you know, how much uh, the the fists, you know, are are kind of lit up as an activity center. So. Uh, I think all of those things, you know, really indicate, you know, kind of uh, activity or, you know, where emotions uh, are, are felt. And uh, I think that it's a great first start, uh, first step uh, to, you know, parsing out, you know, some more of these emotions. Um, obviously, we experience those emotions in a number of different ways. It can be elevated heart rate. It can be, um, you know, skin uh, transference and, you know, how, how much, uh, uh, oxygen we're taking in uh, through our, our skin, how much, uh, you know, ability to, you know, regulate uh, temperature uh, we have uh, in our sweat glands, uh, our, um, you know, any number of different responses there from the, the nervous system or the parasympathetic nervous system uh, can, can generate a physiological response uh, to an emotional state. So uh, those are, you know, some really good uh, indicators of, of how, you know, some of those responses work. Uh, in uh, the body and uh, we're going to explore that in a little bit more detail in the next video. Uh, the last uh, image here uh, for this particular video is just kind of a connection back to Paul Ekman's uh, nonverbal microexpressions. Uh, Dr. Ekman indicated that we have universal human uh, microexpressions and universal human uh, facial expressions and uh, he tested that out uh, by you know looking at a, a large kind of cross-section of humans uh, from three different cultures and uh, determined that we had uh, several basic nonverbal microexpressions that uh, transcend culture and uh, for the most part, those you know transcendent kind of micro expressions uh, are really similar to uh, our transcendent emotional states as well. Please click on the next video in this series to learn more about interpersonal communication and emotions and how those things impact you.